Just about a year ago, the stock market hit rock bottom and President Obama signed into law the $787 billion American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, otherwise known as the president's first stimulus package. The main goal of the bill was to spare the nation from high unemployment, which is currently hovering around 10 percent. So much for that. Another goal was to get Wall Street and Americans to begin reinvesting in the economy. As we head into the midterm elections, the big question is, did the stimulus work? Is unemployment down? Are Americans investing again? The short answer is no. No to all of the above. So when will the recovery actually begin? Here to explain is Robert Higgs, author of Crisis and Leviathan, one of the classic works, maybe the best work there is on the gross and the growth and abuse of government power. Bob, that was a little slip of the tongue. I called it gross. His current op-ed, No Recovery Until America Invests Again, can be found on Investors.com. Professor Higgs, Bob, welcome back to Freedom Watch. So what, what will it take for the government to realize, this is so basic a question, Bob, but no one in Washington except Ron Paul and the defenders of the free market are able to answer it. What will it take for the government to realize that a problem caused by too much borrowing and spending with an artificially established interest rate cannot be cured by more borrowing and spending with an artificially established interest rate? Uh, Judge, I'm not sure what it's going to take to convince them because uh, when they make these decisions that they tell us are decisions uh, aimed at getting the economy out of the recession, we need to understand that uh, a variety of political motives also stand behind those decisions. And, and uh, so far, they've done a very good job at serving their political interests in the sense that they've used the pretext of the recession and the financial debacle to enrich tremendously a, a number of important groups that uh, back the Obama administration and uh, Democrats in general. Right, give give and, me an uh, example, Bob, of some of the groups that have been enriched and how they've been enriched that were chosen the, because the, of their political affiliation to the president and the Democrats, not because of any need to uphold the economic infrastructure of the nation. If we look, uh, Judge, at this so-called stimulus uh, bill that was passed last uh, year very early, what we find is that a, a very large amount of that money was, was actually spent uh, to, to bulk up the employment of uh, government employees, uh, not only federal employees who, who've received substantial pay increases, but a lot of state and local employees as well who've, uh, who've received federal transfer money uh, in effect to paying their salaries. So, so these government employees uh, are one of the, the most important groups that the Obama administration looks to to support uh, its policies and to to support its reelection when the time comes. So, so government employees would be first and foremost of the interest groups uh, that have been uh, served. Uh, but uh, there there are others. For example, in the reorganization of uh, General Motors and right. Chrysler, uh, the the labor unions were given uh, ex extremely uh, good treatment, you have far better treatment than they should have received in, in a normal bankruptcy. So uh, the Obama administration in its spending programs and in, in its industrial organizations and its in its uh, programs to prop up house prices and uh, to bail out people who can't pay their mortgages, all these things are aimed at groups they can expect to disproportionately support their policies and their reelection. Sounds like now, uh, of course, it sounds the, like he's trying the, to follow the model uh, of one of his idols, FDR. And of course, you you recount right. this beautifully in Crisis and Leviathan. Except that the, the the end of Crisis and Leviathan is things are far worse after what these folks did than before they took over. Whereby FDR would build hospitals or stadiums or roads either in districts where many, many Democrats lived or where he wanted inroads, like in the South, where he wanted to sort of bring Democrats into the party, but or people into the Democratic Party. I'm intrigued by your first choice 
of a waste of this money, and that is government salaries, because this really violates not only common sense, but economics 101. Government doesn't produce, it consumes. If the government <laughs> and, wanted uh, to invest a dollar, the last place it should put it is in its own coffers. This is like paying somebody to dig a hole and then fill the hole. Sure, uh, that person will actually, have some money uh, with which to put food <laughs> on the table, but the digging of the hole and the filling of the hole doesn't advance the economy at all. It's actually worse than that in many cases, Judge, because what these government employees are doing uh, is not simply digging a hole and filling it, but doing things that are interfering with the successful operation of the private economy. So uh, the, the world would be better off, except for these specific uh, government functionaries, uh, if they weren't in these jobs at all. And to pay them even more to fill these functions is a travesty. But that's what's uh, being done right now. Now, y your reference to the Roosevelt administration is, is extremely apt because uh, that administration did exactly the same thing. Uh, although the history books tell us uh, that all of these New Deal policies were aimed at, at uh, recovery and reform and, and relief, uh, in fact, the prime motivation behind virtually all the New Deal programs was to pump up support for the Democratic Party in general and for Roosevelt in particular. And uh, we have to have to give them credit for having succeeded magnificently in what they intended primarily to achieve. Right. Now, the cost of that, of course, was a prolonged uh, depression that, that, in fact, lasted about 16 years, if we think of it correctly. But it certainly lasted throughout the decade of the 1930s, everyone must agree. And they created a political coalition that, uh, that served the Democrats well long after FDR died, it, it, probably until Ronald Reagan came along. But switching gears Indeed. just a little bit, I want you to explain for those uh, watching and listening to us now, uh, Bob Higgs, how when the government takes money out of the economy and say, gives it to uh, government employees to do the same job but pays them more. That is less wealth available for investment. And without the money available for private investment, economic activity will shrink rather than grow. Well, the uh, investment has plummeted uh, uh, terrifically in this recession, Judge. It, uh, it fell about 34 percent from its peak in uh, 2006. And even though there was a little recovery of investment spending uh, late last year, it's still almost 30 percent below its previous peak level. Now, that is a huge shortfall of investment. And because investment uh, spending is the real driver of the economic growth process, not government spending of any kind, but investment spending, uh, and because that uh, is at such a low ebb right now, there is no possible way that this recovery can be brisk for very long. You can dish out government transfer payments as quickly as you like, but that isn't going to produce any real additions to wealth. In fact, it's probably going to interfere with those additions that might otherwise have been achieved. So, so the, the discouragement of investment in this recession by the government's policies, again, mimics what happened in the 1930s when the Roosevelt administration's policies had a tremendous frightening effect on private investors, especially in the latter half of the 1930s. We are chatting with Professor Robert Higgs of the Independent Institute and, of course, author of, uh, of the great treat treatise Crisis and Leviathan. What would happen, uh, Professor Higgs, if the government stopped collecting income taxes for a year? Wouldn't that have a salutary effect on the economy? Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> it would mean that uh, the government would, would have to either give up a lot of the activities it's, it's uh, now carrying out or would, would have to, to fund them by borrowed uh, money and uh, indirectly by money creation. That would be a certainly undesirable side effect if the government persisted in wanting to keep up its present level of activity, but but if it lost all the income tax revenue, it would certainly have a discouraging effect on on the government's scope of activity. And at the same time, it would be a tremendous, I mean, un unbelievably great uh, incentive 
for private uh, firms and individuals to, to undertake productive activities. Professor Robert Higgs, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on Freedom Watch. You're welcome, Judge. Glad to be here.